Welcome to City This Week. I'm Mary Lee. It's good to have you with us. Coming up in this week's news, City volunteers tend to survivors of a fire accident in Taipei City, Taiwan. City continues to help schools in need by building them prefabricated classrooms in Yunlin County. And we see how City became a part of Zen Zhenfeng's life after his daughter was involved in a car accident. In Taiwan, on September 4th, a blaze broke out in the early morning hours in an apartment building in Taipei, killing one and injuring three. The next day, city volunteers traveled to the apartment to offer an ear to listen, a shoulder to cry on, and a hand to help the family who are grieving from the loss of their home and son. Volunteers visit what used to be the home of the Yu family. The fire not only took the life of the family's son, but spreading to the floor above injured three other residents of the building. Everyone was in shock at what happened. As a member of the family explains what happened, volunteers ask whether the family would need help cleaning up in the days ahead. We came as soon as we could to check on the family and offer our support. As well, we took a look around to see if this case needs our continued support in the days ahead. Although the road to recovery from an event like this is long, volunteers hope the family will find the courage to get past their loss and rediscover peace in their hearts. In the Dominican Republic, at the end of August, city volunteers and team members from the United States and Dominican Republic came together to hold a free clinic in the city La Romana School and provided medical services to some 400 patients. 41-year-old Rafael Noel moved to the Dominican Republic from Haiti when he was nine and still has not obtained legal status. The man lost his left leg and job to a vehicle accident three years ago, leaving his family of eight struggling to survive. Like my children, if they catch flu or have a temperature, I will pick up herbal medication to relieve their symptoms. Though his wife works odd jobs, the family has no idea where their next meal will come from, and the fridge only has a few bottles of cheap medicine in it. This medication is used like a painkiller and relieves fevers. It is approximately two U.S. dollars. It is a cheaper type of medication you can get in the pharmacy. Upon learning cities here to hold a free clinic, many villagers arrive with a rare opportunity to receive medical treatment. They like to come to the free clinic because though they can get treatment at public hospitals, they still don't have money to buy medicine. Through the free clinic, Tima Medical staff found that many villagers suffer chronic illnesses due to the unhygienic environment they live in. Maybe it is because of their financial situation, so these residents weren't able to follow up on their condition with their doctors. Residents all believe with City's help, they will gain healthier bodies that will lead them to live better lives. I am really happy to receive medication because since I got injured, I have had no money to buy it. Thank you so much. Seeing how happy villagers are, city volunteers and team members all vow to continue bringing love to every needy corner. In Taiwan, city has continued to put the prefabricated classrooms built in the wake of 921 earthquake to good use by lending them to schools undergoing reconstruction. In Yunlin County, city volunteers disassembled eight classrooms in Douliu Junior High School and will be taking them to Tong Elementary School. Meanwhile, at the Haifeng branch of Mailao Elementary School, students arrived to help city volunteers lay down interlocking bricks for the six temporary classrooms that will be assembled here.
If it accidentally drops, what do you do? You move away and let it fall. It's all right if it breaks, because we can make them again. But we don't want you to injure your legs. After listening to their teacher's instructions, students form a line to begin their work. As the Haifeng branch of Mai Liao Elementary School in Yunling is not earthquake resistant, the school has decided to reconstruct its buildings and thus is in need of temporary classrooms. Siji Foundation came to help. They are really full of patience. They came to our school for a quick survey and decided to help right away. Now students are assisting with laying down interlocking bricks. Having the chance to build our own prefab classrooms, of course we are all excited. When the bricks are passed to you, do it at an angle so that they won't fall off easily. Some 20 city volunteers set aside their schedules to help. Among them, Ling Qingzhong, who is in the construction field, leads the other volunteers in assembling the prefab classrooms. I will build the foundation first so that it is easier for the brothers and sisters to work on the interlocking bricks because they all have done it before. The interlocking bricks are designed to allow the soil to breathe and can be recycled for reuse. Also in Yunlin County at Donghe Junior High School, one can find 20 prefab classrooms with some 30 students studying in each. The school also added a tarp to shade the classrooms from the sun. Though these temporary classrooms are small in size, however, they can easily withstand typhoons or torrential rains. We only experienced minor flooding. The water came quickly, but it also subsided real quick. I think it's because of Tsuji's interlocking bricks, so the water receded right away. The prefab classrooms are built on top of interlocking bricks, and beneath these bricks is a layer of small stones. Their bricks are permeable, so the soil beneath can still breathe. When there is water, it will easily dissipate to the layer below. All the construction materials, including the flooring and ceiling, as well as the lighting equipment, will be removed for use at the next school. It is not spacious. But on the other hand, we are able to use this opportunity to tell our students to remain calm whenever needed. We are lucky to have access to the prefab classrooms. After we take it down, we are moving them to Tsutong Elementary School. Tsuji's prefabricated classrooms give students a temporary place to continue their education and also help pass on the message of the importance of cherishing all resources. Diallo Salayu from the Republic of Guinea-Bissau in West Africa arrived in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia on a scholarship for a master's degree. Just when his future was getting started, doctors announced Salayu would need lifelong dialysis treatments and the school also planned to discontinue his tuition assistance. Fortunately, Tsuji showed up in time and along with the help of another charity organization, Salayu is now receiving dialysis treatments and is able to continue with his studies. 24-year-old Diallo Salu from the Republic of Guinea-Bissau in West Africa arrived in Malaysia's Kuala Lumpur on a master's degree scholarship. However, he was suddenly diagnosed with kidney disease and was told he would need lifelong dialysis treatment. I have to do dialysis three times a week and I have to study. They asked me to pay every day uh, 150 ringgit Malaysia I, and I told them I really cannot. Besides having medical bills to pay, the school also planned to discontinue its scholarship support. Luckily, Tsuji arrived with help to ensure the students could continue his studies. PC Foundation, they are uh, uh, really, really very good. Your company, I totally appreciate it I, and I hope you will, uh, you will succeed to, to reach your objective. Taking Tsuji's love and care to heart, Diallo Salu shows up at the recycling station in his spare time to help sort recyclables. After receiving medical funds, the students even wanted to give them to Tsuji. We told him that we don't ask for anything in return. He can give it in his own way. If he wants to, he can donate part of this to our charity fund, and from there it will help others. He will be able to go from a receiver to a giver. 
Deeply moved by the Buddhist NGO, the students brought his friends to take part in a TG charity sale and also put on a volunteer vest. It is not because I want to pay. I want to show you that I am also volunteer to assist uh, your organization in order to assist other people. Tiji's timely assistance not only warmed the heart of the Yellow Salu, but also brought hope of a better future to the students. In 2005, the Tsuji Malaysia chapter introduced a one-parent, one-child course at the Tsuji Academy, requiring parents to also attend classes with their children. At first, this concept was not accepted by many parents. However, by forging ahead with the idea, parents eventually came around to treasure this time with their children. And through participating in this program, the lives of many families have been changed and numerous parents have gained an interest in Tsuji and became certified Tsuji volunteers as a result. Earlier this year, when the musical adaptation of the Sutra of Innumerable Meanings was performed in Malaysia, students of the Tsuji Academy opened the show with a drum act. Although it was a first for many of the children whose ages ranged from 13 to 19, they still handled it like old hands. Near the end of this year, the musical adaptation of the Water Repentance Sutra will be performed in Penang. This time, however, over 500 students from the Tsuji Academy and their parents are taking the stage front and center with other Tsuji volunteers. The rehearsals not only help to unite movements, but also hearts as well. At home, we would practice and the two of us would go through our parts. And in the end, I felt like we were both more understanding towards one another. In 2001, Malaysia Chapter's first Tsuji Academy class was held in Penang's Hanjiang High School, where they taught Jinx aphorisms and moral education. A class for parents to attend was introduced in 2003. Then, in 2005, the Academy established a new rule. For every student who attends the class, a parent must accompany the child. At that time, the idea was not accepted by many parents, and teachers, as a result, faced much criticism. Many of the parents felt that the Tsuji Academy was making trouble for them by requiring them to attend classes with their children. So we were yelled at and complained too. Of course we felt hurt, but after wiping away our tears, we continued on as we knew we were doing the right thing. Because many times, it's the parents who have gained the most through these one-child, one-parent classes. Now with 18 Tsuji Academies running in Malaysia, the voices of opposition from parents have become a thing of the past. In fact, parents and children alike end up treasuring the time together. And as parents get to know the Tsuji Foundation, some even become certified Tsuji volunteers. So, Huang Qi Sun and Huang Xiu Xia have been married for 15 years and have two children. In the past, the two would constantly bicker and often mention a possible divorce. When the two of us got upset, that's when our children were especially affected. I would often take a stick and hit their hands with it. I would hit hard too, and their hands would be raised immediately. However, in 2009, the Huang family attended a Tsuji Academy class and mended the cracks in the marriage. I will say thank you and I'm grateful for your help. Nothing is taken for granted. In the past year or two, we will still have our differences of opinion, but I don't have the heart to say hurtful words to purposely make him upset or to win the argument. Education shouldn't just be about handing over your kids to a school, as sometimes parents are the ones that need to be educated. In this way, Tsuji's One Parent, One Child program has changed many family bonds for the better.
Two years ago, Zhen Zhengfeng's daughter was involved in an accident while riding her scooter. Critically injured, she was sent to the Taichung City Hospital for emergency treatment. Thanks to the care and support of doctors and City Hospital volunteers, Zhen's daughter pulled through. In gratitude, Zhen decided to join City and presently serves as both a recycling volunteer and a media volunteer. In March of 2011, the daughter of retired military police Zhen Zhengfeng was involved in a life-threatening accident while riding her scooter. The accident resulted in a sudden increase in pressure on her abdomen, which pushed her liver upwards and ruptured her diaphragm. With her liver protruding into the right side of her chest cavity, she was losing massive amounts of blood. She lost more than 15,000 cc of blood, which is as much as a healthy person will cycle through in three days. The medical staff worked like crazy to try to save her life. I want to thank my father, mother and my doctors for saving my life. Seeing those people who were strangers doing so much on our behalf really touched my heart. Thanks to you, Ziji was able to become part of my life. Although the Taizong Ziji Hospital is close to our home, without you, I would have never stepped foot in it nor would have thought about doing volunteer work. When it rains, the rain will just run off the roof. I thought there was a waste and so made a rain collection system that collects the rainwater in these barrels. Then we can use the rainwater to clean the PET bottles that we are recycling. Before it was we who were helped, but now we can turn around and help others. It has been truly an enlightening experience. Becoming a media volunteer and seeing so much suffering in the process, I've learned to appreciate my own blessings. After seeing the suffering and despair in his work, he will come home and share stories of what he has seen with us. Our daughter remarked that she never thought that there were so many people in need of assistance in Taiwan. Before, I would always be looking for where I could benefit. Now it is about giving without asking for anything in return. Sometimes he comes back from his volunteer work and is exhausted and should rest, but instead will discuss upcoming meetings with other volunteers on Skype. Although I'm tired, but there is a lot of joy there as well. Regardless of the pressures of the job, seeing his daughter grow up healthy is the most important thing. <laughs> In one more year, Zen's daughter will graduate from college and be a qualified nurse. If I can help them go from sickness to health, that alone would make me happy. Together, father and daughter are making their lives better for not only each other but those around them. In Taiwan's Hualien, to look after the safety of senior residents living in indigenous tribes, City Foundation has been rebuilding homes and washrooms in Wanrong, Fengbing, Shoulik, and Xinchen Township. Next, let's visit seniors that benefited from City's help. Trying the new handrails installed in her bathroom, Senior Wu is all smiles. To safeguard the safety of senior residents in indigenous tribes, Ziji Foundation has been rebuilding needing seniors' washrooms. It is very comfortable and my knees don't hurt that much anymore. I'm very thankful. Ziji volunteers are full of compassion. Thank you so much. <laughs> City volunteers thoughtfully personalize and rebuild the washrooms according to each senior's specific needs. Despite the hard work, no one complains as they know these seniors will be living in a safer environment as a result. We need to put our hearts into building these facilities and make sure that all of them are sturdy enough for these senior residents to use. 
Dancing with local residents, today Tsuji volunteers are holding a celebration for Senior Light as she will be moving into her newly rebuilt home. Seeing the transformation of her old house is a joyous moment for the senior. Before the transformation, Senior Light and her granddaughter live in a home that leaked whenever it rained. Furthermore, the two had to sleep on the floor and shower in the open air. Thanks to the Tsuji Foundation, Senior Lai is now living in a safer and cleaner environment. Other than improving her living surroundings, Tsuji volunteers have also promised to continue providing this family with love and care. Tsuji volunteers in the United States continue to promote Jing's efforts and collections in hotels throughout the country. This time, volunteers from the Tsuji U.S. headquarters in San Dimas, California, arrived at a senior citizen's community center, where they share these books of wisdom to local residents. Volunteers at the U.S. Tsuji headquarters in San Dimas, California, have been vigorous in promoting Jingzi aphorisms at hotels in and around the area. This time, they brought these books of wisdom to a senior citizen community center. I am very excited about this initiative. At the same time, I hope to spread this initiative far and wide. I hope more business owners can introduce this book to others. Here at the Youth and Family Coalition monthly meeting, Tsuji volunteer Liu Rongrong proactively seized the opportunity to introduce Jingzi aphorisms to community representatives. As I was introducing the book to everyone, Alta immediately picked up a copy and began promoting this book to others. This book inspires, it gives hope. People that are feeling a little depressed makes them think about themselves makes them think about others, makes them realize that life is great and life is what you make of it. But I think the best thing this book does is it makes people think. Thanks to Alta's recommendations, suggesting the aphorism collections in four different languages can now be found in the library of the Senior Citizen Community Center. And it is hoped that these books of wisdom can inspire goodness and compassion in the resident's heart. At the end of the show, we bring you images from a recent tea gathering held at the U.S. City Headquarters in San Dimas, California. The event was participated by staff members from hotels around Southern California, where they discussed with city volunteers on how to better promote Jinx aphorisms in their workplace. We will leave you with these images. Thank you for watching. See you next week.